Hi everyone, I am back with another pattern drafting tutorial and this is my very first video for the year 2022. I feel really, really excited. My name is Selassie Travers and you're welcome to this channel. I want to use this opportunity to acknowledge all my old subscribers. I see your support for last year. I really, really am grateful. Thank you so much. And to the new subscribers, you're especially welcome. So today I will be showing you how to draft this eye-waisted, loose-fitted short pants. The silhouette of this short is um, very close to a clot. It is very loose around the thighs and not so tight around the hips, but very, very close-fitted around the waist. This kind of short is flattering on slender figures, you know, girls with slender thighs like myself. And of course, it also suits those with thicker thighs. So um, the length of this short is the original length of the pattern. But at the end of this tutorial, I decided to switch up the length just a little bit. Now, without wasting time, let's jump right into this tutorial. From the top line, which is the waistline, I'm going to measure down my crotch depth measurement plus half of an inch. This for me is 11 and a half inches. And now I'm going to square a horizontal line right across this point. This line is my crotch line. To determine the length of the pants, I'm just going to come down from the crotch line 3 and 3 quarter inches. Now, coming down with this figure is going to work for any height and any size as long as you're working with your accurate crotch depth measurement. All right, now I'm just going to square a horizontal line right across this point. This line is the bottom of the bent. Now, from this point, I'm going to add 2 inches M allowance. So, I just square out a horizontal line right across this point. This is the M allowance line, okay? To get the hip line, I'm going to measure from the top line to the crotch line and then divide whatever that gives me into three equal parts. Now from the crotch line, I'm going to mark upward this figure, okay? And then I'm going to square a horizontal line right across this point. This line is my hip line. Now I'm going to take you through the lines. The top line is the waistline, second line the hip line, Third line, the crotch line, fourth line, the bottom line, and the fifth line is the M allowance. Now on the crotch line, I'm going to mark my hip measurement divided by four. And on the waistline, I'm going to mark my hip measurement divided by four. Now I'm going to join these two points together. Next, I'm going to mark the midpoint of this vertical line. To get the crotch extension for the front, I'm going to take the measurement from this point to this point, and then whatever that gives me, I'm going to divide it into four. And this for me is two and a half inches. Now I'm going to come out from the vertical line on the crotch line and mark a point. So this is the crotch extension for the front pant. Next, I'm going to draw a diagonal line. This line is a guideline. On the waistline from the vertical line, I'm going to mark three quarter inches. If you're going to have a dart on the front of your pants, please mark in half of an inch. Now on the diagonal line, I'm going to mark one and a half inches. Now I'm going to connect these points together. First, I'm going to use a straight ruler to connect the point on the waist to the point on the vertical line. Next, I'm going to take my French curve and connect the point on the crotch line, passing through the point on the diagonal line to the point on the vertical line, making sure I have a smooth transition. Now on the crotch line, I'm going to mark in from side seam quarter of an inch. Next, I'm going to take the measurement from this point to this point and divide it into two and mark a point there. I'm going to square a vertical line 
on a 90 degree angle right across this point. Now this vertical line is the crease line for the front pant. Now from this point I'm going to mark my waist measurement divided by 4 plus half of an inch. Take note of this point. Now if you're going to add a dart at this point you need to add your dart allowance. But I won't be adding a dart to the front of my pants. Right now I'm going to fold in the M allowance before working on the bottom of the pant. From this point I'm going to square a straight line to the bottom of the pant making sure it's on a 90 degree angle. Now I'm going to come in from this point half of an inch. Then I'll connect from this point to the crotch like so. Now I'm going to take the measurement from this point to the crease line and transfer whatever I get to the other side of the crease line like so. Now connect these four points together and blend carefully, especially along the hip line, making sure there are no sharp corners. Next, we're going to move over to draft the fly. Measure down along this vertical line and mark seven and a half inches and square out a guideline, just a short line, okay? Now I'm going to measure out along the center front of the pant and mark one and a half inches. Now connect this point together. Now come upward from the fly guideline half of an inch and then mark a point and from this point draw a curve to blend into the center front of the pant. And we're done with drafting the fly. Now I'm going to add half of an inch along this part of the pant and also all around the pant. Make sure you fold in your M allowance before you cut out the pattern. Because of the seal that we're going for on the crotch line, I'm going to mark my hip divided by four plus one and a half inches. And then I'm going to mark that same figure on the waistline. Now connect both points together. Divide the distance from this point to this point into two. Whatever you get, come out of the vertical line on the crotch line and mark that. This is the crotch extension for the back piece. Now mark the midpoint of this vertical line. And from this point, draw a diagonal line out and mark two inches. Now come in from the vertical line on the waistline and mark in one and three quarter inches. By the way, if the difference between your waist and your hip is not that much, I would advise you come in with one and a half inches. Now from this point, come upward three quarter of an inch. Next, we're going to connect this four points together. First, I'm going to join these two points together. And then I'm going to continue this line until it touches the crotch line. So this is going to serve as a guide when drawing the curve from the crotch blending into the waistline. On a situation where when you're drawing the curve, you want the curve line to be out of this guideline. You don't want the curve line to be deep inside the guideline, okay? Another thing you need to consider because of how long the back crotch extension is, I would advise you come in from the point on the crotch line, come in about one to one and a half inches before drawing the curve line. And also make sure you blend carefully from the, from the crotch line, blending into the waistline. Now for the dart, 
Take the distance from this point to this point and mark the midpoint. And then square down a line that is about 4 inches long. Now from this point I'm going to measure my waist divided by 4 plus 1 and quarter inches for dart allowance. Next, on the crotch line on side seam, I'm going to come in with quarter of an inch. Take the measurement from this point to this point, and then mark the midpoint. Now square a straight line right across this point to waistline and M line. So this line is the crease line for the back pants. Now I'm going to square a straight line from the point on the crotch to the M line like so. Next I'm going to fold in the M allowance. And then I'm going to come in from this point half of an inch. And I'm going to connect this point to the crotch line like so. Next, I'm going to take the measurement from this point to the crease line. Whatever I get here, I'm going to transfer it to the other side of the crease line. Next, I'm going to connect this four point to draw the side seam of the back pant. On both sides of the vertical line, I'm going to mark my dart divided by 2. So we're going to mark that figure on both sides of this vertical line. Now connect to draw the dart. And here, yeah, guys, we're done. Add your seam allowance around the pant and close the darts before you cut out your pattern. True the waist by filling in the shortage after closing the dart okay now we're going to cut out this pattern piece make sure you fold in your M allowance before you cut out your pattern and we're done with drafting the back piece next I'm just going to illustrate to you how you can construct the pocket for the pants and also draft your waistband. From the waistline that is including the seam allowance, I'm going to measure down nine and a half inches. So this nine and a half inches includes a quarter inch M allowance for the pocket. Now on the hip line, including the seam allowance, I'm going to mark in seven and a half inches okay so we're marking this along the hip line all right now i'm going to connect this two points like so for the opening of the pocket i'm going to mark on the original waistline i'm going to mark in one and three quarter inches from side seam now from the original waistline to determine the length of the opening, I'm going to mark down along the side seam six and a half inches and then connect these two points and then extend the line to the side seam allowance. Now I'm going to copy the outline of the pocket on the wrong side of my pattern. And after doing this, I'm going to add my seam allowance, which is quarter inch along this line. Next, I'm going to take a pattern paper. The length of this pattern paper should be the same as the length of the pocket, which is nine and a half inches. Why the width of this paper should be twice the width of the pocket. So because my pocket is seven and a half inches, so the least width of this paper should be about 15 inches wide. So right now I'm going to place this paper on fold 
and then pin the folded part along the vertical line. Now I'm going to turn it over to the right side and then trim out the excess from the side seam. Now I'm going to copy the pocket opening seam allowance to the right side of my pattern. Next, I am going to take the first two parts of the side seam, which is the side seam of the pant pattern and the first side seam of the pocket pattern. And then I am going to trim both together. So we're going to cut out this two part to create the opening for the pockets. And basically we're done with drafting the pockets. You can leave the shape of your pocket like so. So next I'm going to unpin the, the pockets. Um, then I'm going to place a notch on the folded area of the pattern on both the top and the bottom and then draw out my seam allowance. Because I want the side seam of my pocket to have a curved edge, first I'm going to mark the midpoint of the M of the pocket and then I'm going to measure upward from the bottom of the pocket one inch and then I'm going to connect the point from the mid point of the M to this point on the side seam to create a curved edge pocket. So now I'm going to trim out this excess like so. Now I'm going to redraw my M allowance. So I also copied the, the curved edge of the pocket to my pattern for future purples. For the waistband, I'm going for a straight waistband, which is basically a rectangle. The total length of my pattern is going to be four inches. And the reason it's four inches is because my finish band, I want my finish band to be one and a half inches. So you're going to multiply that by two because you'll be putting the length of your band on fold. So that is going to give you three inches. Now add one inch seam allowance. That's going to give me four inches. So that is how we got the length of the band. Now for the width of the band, it's basically your waist circumference plus one inch seam allowance plus one and a half inches um, extension. So the extension is going to be for the your button O or your hook and eye. So guys, after um, rocking the original length of the pan for some time, I decided to switch things up a little bit by making the shorts even shorter. So all I did for this alteration was just to measure upward from the original M line um, one and quarter inches and then trim this out. Okay, or you just go ahead and fold the excess in as um, as M allowance. And that's basically it. That's all you need to do to make the shorts shorter. You know, the longer version of the shorts will be something I'll wear out for a casual day out or um, something I'll wear when I'm going to the Mac Heats and maybe pair that up with the sneakers or whatever, sleepers or sanders. But the shorter version would be something I wear for a typical date night. And here guys, we've come to the end of this tutorial. I do hope you find this tutorial helpful. If you do, remember to leave a comment, like this video, share it if you wish, and most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Every time, every time, I know go ever replace you. No more game, I go embrace you. You know, say I go the faithful, faithful, faithful. The way you turn me on, turn me on. I like the way you turn me on. The way you turn me on, turn me on, yeah. The way you turn me on, turn me on.